Hi, this is Mr. Sato, The Winter's Tale, Act 1. The Winter's Tale is not one of Shakespeare's most widely read plays, but it deserves more attention than it gets. It's a terrific story of love and jealousy, injustice, foolishness, and redemption. I saw this clever production of it at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, which depicted Sicilia as a sort of a 19th century Asia, and Bohemia as something resembling the American Western frontier. So in this production, Leontes and Hermione here are Asian, and Polixenes wears cowboy boots. Very original, good production. In this video, I'm going to assume you've already read Act 1, but I'll try to avoid giving spoilers about the rest of the play. If you haven't read Act 1 yet, please read it. The line numbers I'm using come from this Folger Edition paperback. Okay, first, I usually teach a little introductory lesson on Shakespearean theater. I've made another video on that. Here's a link. You might find that interesting. Act 1. Many people have had the experience of introducing their best friend to a third person and then having those two become best friends without you. Terrible. Disaster. And that's leaving romantic jealousy out of it. If your best friend gets with your girlfriend or boyfriend, multiply that pain by 10 right? That's an excruciating experience. In that sense, we can all understand the agony of betrayal and jealousy. But in this play, the jealous guy, Leontes, king of Sicilia, is wrong. He's suspicious of his wife, Hermione, and his best friend, Polixenes, king of Bohemia, but they're innocent. They haven't done anything. Now, how could this happen without any real evidence? Let's look at the play. Turn to Act 1, Scene 2, Line 139. Polixenes has just taken Hermione by the hand in a non-romantic way, and Leontes totally loses it. He says to the audience, too hot, too hot, meaning too lustful. He says they're paddling palms and pinching fingers. He says they're putting on a free face, meaning an innocent face, but really have become lovers. Later in line 338, he uses a word that strikes me as particularly nasty. He calls her a hobby horse. This is a hobby horse, by which he means she's a toy any man can ride. Back on line 149, the reference to sighing at the mort of the deer refers to the practice of blowing a horn to announce the death of the deer at the end of the hunt. Mort means death, but it was also code for sexual climax. Honestly, I'm not making this stuff up. So I believe that's a suggestion that Leontes thinks they're sighing like lovers who have just finished doing the dirty deed. And in line 150, why does his brow like it not? Well, that means it's time for a lesson in cuckoldry. When the wife of Mr. Alpha is unfaithful with Mr. Beta, it's said that Mr. Alpha is a cuckold and that his wife has cuckolded him. And there was a figure of speech that said that the humiliated cuckold has horns on his head. So Leontes' brow likes it not because it's making a cuckold's horns grow there. Elizabethans could be kind of weird like that. All right, back to the play. What evidence does Leontes have that she's unfaithful? None, really. She can persuade Polixenes to stay longer when Leontes couldn't. That's it. And she's doing that because that nutcase Leontes asked her to. He sees them holding hands in a friendly way, in a society in which holding hands, even a man kissing the back of the woman's hand, was not considered inappropriate. So I ask you, when a person exhibits strange and inexplicable behavior, especially suspicions that have no basis in actual evidence, what might be the source of it? In Othello, which is better known than The Winter's Tale, Iago puts the idea into Othello's head and even plants false evidence. But there's none of that here. This is all coming out of Leontes' own diseased imagination. If I were in the classroom, we'd have a discussion about this until someone said that it's a result of Leontes' own insecurities. So here, on the one-way highway of YouTube, I suggest to you that when people do weird things, they're expressing some internal feeling, maybe some kind of insecurity. For example, a few years ago, there was an urban legend about a popular fast food restaurant that used liquefied cow eyeballs to thicken their milkshakes. What? Of course, it wasn't true. But young people spread that rumor like crazy. If someone told you that, as you were drinking a shake, you wouldn't be able to think about anything else but cow eyeballs, right? It would touch on your fear of incomprehensible ingredient lists and huge irresponsible corporations that will do anything for a buck. Your imagination would make that ideal real to you. You take a sip, 
Think about the texture of it in your mouth, and after a while, you'd probably believe it was real enough, and you'd stop drinking it. You know, just to be on the safe side. That's what's happening to Leontes. In Act 2, he will even use a similar analogy of a spider in his drinking cup. He gets it into his head that they're cheating on him, so he sees solid evidence where there isn't any. And just like your fear of huge mega corporations being greedy and irresponsible gave credence to the untrue idea that they put something gross in your food, maybe it's Leontes' fears and insecurities that make him fear that Hermione is cheating on him even though there's no evidence. Leontes here is actually expressing a fear that he'll lose her. And why would he fear that he's going to lose Hermione? Well, the play doesn't say. Does he think he's not good enough for her? Or that he's weak or inadequate or undeserving in some way? Is there self-hatred at the bottom of his fear? Possibly. Possibly. And there's a second possible reason. Leontes hates and fears women. He's a misogynist. Look at what he says to his boy Mamilius, though he's actually talking more to himself here. Women will say anything. Were they false as or dyed blacks, as wind, as waters, false as dice are to be wished by one that fixes no boundary twixt his and mine? Leontes is saying that women are false and deceptive. They're liars and not to be trusted. The over-dyed blacks he's referring to could be clothing that gets old and faded, then deceptively re-dyed black to look new again. He also compares women to gamblers who don't respect the clear boundary that says, this is mine and this is yours. So Leonti speaks of women with contempt because he fundamentally thinks women are untrustworthy. And in what way are they untrustworthy? He explains in detail in that really disturbing soliloquy about his pond being fished by his neighbor. Many a man there is that little thinks she, his wife, has been sluiced in his absence, and his pond fished by his neighbor who smiles in his face. Today, sluiced means rinsed clean with a stream of water, but here, clearly, he's talking about sex. According to my Folger edition notes, his references to gates and ponds would have been recognized in Elizabethan days as metaphors for women's private parts. He goes on in that speech to obsess about how women can't be controlled. Later in the play, he'll lambast another man, Antigonus, for not keeping his wife under control. There was an expression back then, false as water because water takes the shape of whatever container it happens to be in. So Leontes fears Hermione because he wants to own and control her, but can't. When he says women are false as wind and water, he says that because the wind and sea are unpredictable and uncontrollable. They're powerful, too. He wants to consider her a possession, private property, like in that speech about gamblers taking things that belong to other people. He fears he can't hold on to her, that she's slippery, meaning unchaste, but also tricky and hard to get hold of. He feels helpless to defend his property, which is what he considers his wife, that there's no barricado for a belly, meaning there's no barricade protecting his wife's womb. It will just willingly let in and out the enemy. He can't control his wife's sexuality, so he assumes that she has been unfaithful simply because there's nothing he can do to prevent it. And a third reason Leontes may suspect this is because he thinks that's what the world is like. It's a bawdy planet, he says. Bawdy means dirty and indecent, usually said in a playful way, but not here. And unfaithfulness is everywhere. Why does he think this about marriage? Has he just seen a lot of infidelity? Has Leontes himself had secret lovers while being married to Hermione? We can't know that. There's no direct evidence. But don't constantly suspicious people often have hidden guilts of their own? Greedy people think everyone else is motivated by greed. Lustful people are certain everyone else's minds are in the gutter. They think everyone else has the same weaknesses and impulses that they have themselves. There is some indirect evidence to support this. Around line 346 to 355, Leontes describes in great detail what it feels like to have a secret lover, whispering to each other, playing footsie under the table, wanting the night to come sooner. How does he know all that? Has he experienced it personally? Could be. Sounds like it, doesn't it? Maybe you've thought of other possible explanations, and that's wonderful. Just make sure you can back it up with evidence from the play, as you've heard me do here. 
Now, if I were in a classroom teaching students this play, I would follow this discussion by assigning a three-paragraph response journal entry showing comprehension, reflection, and application. Of course, they wouldn't be able to refer back to a recording of me going over all this. Whatever stuck in their minds from that class discussion is what they'd most likely write about, and that would be fine. Here's a link to my response journal rubric. You're more than welcome to use it. The journal question is, what could be the basis for Leontes' baseless jealousy? Give evidence. That means give quotes from the play and explain how your evidence supports your opinion. Answering that question on a literal level in the first paragraph shows comprehension. Show me that you really understand the situation. Not that he's jealous, but why. There's no single obviously correct answer to this question. Different scholars see different things. In the second paragraph, tell what you think or feel about the basis of Leontes' jealousy as you see it. A good answer will examine your own feelings about it and show you understand it deeply. You've been really engaged in the text and you really get it. That's called insight. This paragraph is less about the play as it is about your own feelings about it. This is reflection. In the third paragraph, apply this situation to the real world around you. Maybe you've had some experience with jealousy, or with judging someone else unfairly based on your own biases, or maybe you were unfairly judged yourself. You should write about that sort of thing happening in the world you know, about people you know, about news stories you've heard about. How can people today guard against doing what Leontes is doing? Get it? Apply this situation to the world you live in right now. This is what I call application. There's a lot more we could talk about regarding Act 1, but that's what I think is the big question of this act. Why does Leontes do this? Finally, here are some vocabulary words with short definitions organized by section. These are all words that are still in use in contemporary English. The page numbers come from my Folger Edition paperback. Stop the video if you want to copy these down or take screenshots. This is Act 1. Acts 2 and 3. Acts 4 and 5. And here's an index of the topics we've covered in this video. All right, that's it. There's another video to follow about Acts 2 and 3 and a third video about Acts 4 and 5. I hope you watch those as well. Enjoy this underrated gem, The Winter's Tale.